Good morning and welcome to the Josh Whittacombe Show. This is... This is Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Producing it. We should give you the chance to start it one day. No, it's not my name above the door. You slack off because of it. How have you been? Well, let's cut to the chase. We're in Starbucks. We were. 9am, Thursday morning. 8am, mate. 8am. Work hard, play hard, mate. You know me. <laughs> I've not been playing hard. <laughs> I've been working quite hard. Comparatively considering my profession. <laughs> You do work hard. Well, yeah, just, You've I mean, got good stamina. I'd give that about you. Thank you, thank you very much. That's <laughs> the nicest thing you've ever said about me. So we're in Starbucks, 8am Thursday morning. You introduced me as producer Neil. You yep. introduced me as producer Neil, but I almost had a very different... Did you, sorry, did you just get stuck? I thought you were, I thought you were doing an 80s rap. <laughs> no. You introduced me as producer Neil. I mean, if anyone at home wants to remix that, <laughs> then please do. I'd listen to that on a boombox while walking through Harlem. <laughs> so you introduced me as producer Neil then. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> but I was also known as Neil Thank You. Because you, yeah. you know when they say, what's your name? Yeah. I said, Neil Thank You. The barista went, Neil Thank You. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were called Neil Thank You. Neil <laughs> yeah, Thank You is a brilliant name. It sounds like if you've been in Zig Zig Sputnik. <laughs> 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 like if you're in a, like, a... Uh, post-punk band that were overly, <laughs> overly stylized over substance. You'd have been Neil Thank You on bass. <laughs> and your hair would have been a foot tall. <laughs> or you'd have face paint. That's how I picture you, Neil Thank You. I do how all, do you picture Neil Thank You? I, I do all the press because I'd be so polite I wouldn't turn down requests. <laughs> <laughs> and would there be another one called Clive Please? Who'd be... <laughs> <laughs> Who always interrupts. Yeah. Clive Please. <laughs> yeah, and James Pardon. <laughs> And you'd be called Manners. <laughs> and you'd be a spin-off of Bad Manners. <laughs> Who wouldn't have had those names? We'd be the band your parents want you to listen to. Yeah, he's the band your parents want you to listen to. Oh, God, that's great. <laughs> she doesn't know it happened, that girl in Starbucks, but she might have started your career as a pop star. <laughs> I guess hoping. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. XFM's record of the week, Lampshades. Lampshades on fire. I think it should be a winner stays on record of the week. <laughs> so if it's better than next week's record of the week, it's just still more this mouth until there's a better record. I will put that to Mike, our head of music. Yeah, because then you'll find out what the best record ever is. <laughs> if XFM had started in the 50s, <laughs> that's XFM's record of the week, rock around the clock, <laughs> still there after 50 years. Do I have to the, am I the only woman having ideas around this station? Any other business in which we are picked up on... Problems with the show. I mean, where do you start? <laughs> um, dear Josh, producer Neil, and intern Charles, not attending. On Podcast 95, you had a rant about the puerile attitudes and dress sense of the modestly talented Blink-182. I'd say that totally sums it up. However, from a man who has admitted to collecting World Cup Panini stickers and to organising swap sessions with his mates, your call for them to grow up rings somewhat hollow. What? Sorry, sorry, was that not my cue? No, that is your cue. That is, you're fine to ring the, uh, the um, bell of truth. I accept that, but that was last summer. I haven't built a career around it. And also, my trousers are the correct length. <laughs> Blink-182 needs to take a long, hard look in a full-length mirror. <laughs> That's my view on them. Um, additionally, I have some anecdotes and news about Nisloppy. Yes, please. Nisloppy, oh, my word. Dreadful, weren't they? Your opinion? I was friends with Nisloppy's Luke and John, who are both lovely, by the way. <laughs> I'll take that back. <laughs> From their early days, since I saw them do an open mic gig in Islington. And catch them there still. <laughs> I don't know why I've got such an issue with this. I tell you why I've got an issue with Nisloppy. I've only heard one song. It made my teeth try and disappear back inside my gums. I hated it so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reaction. I'm sure they're really nice guys, but tell me that that wasn't trite. Music's so subjective, I don't no, know. Who... No, no, all right. This is going to become the Jeremy Paxman. Did you threaten to overrule him into you? <laughs> it, it was. It, yeah. What you said. They've recently performed. We're about to start a new tour. Keep up the good work, Shell. Do you know the, what I like about that? They're not picking up us on pedantry anymore. The pedantry ones, we got a bit bored of them. AOB, any other business has had its day. I think we should change it to just anything you want on topics we've discussed. From now on, any other business has become unfinished business. Throughout the show, Neil, I want you to wrote, note down every topic we cover. I've done that. I've got a document. Okay, so so far we've got 
Um, it's, it's about six pages long. Oh, no, no, sorry. I mean each episode. Sorry. Oh. So, Manners. Manners. Nisloppy. Blink-182. And then at the end of the show, you're going to read out <laughs> the list of the topics, and we're going to say, have you got anything you want to tell us about these topics we discussed today? And we'll read them out at the start of the following week. If you have anything on these topics or anything, josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh Widdicombe. Oasis acquiesce on the Josh Widdicombe show. And now, today's text and tweet topics. We've well, each brought one today, haven't we, Neil? We have. Would you like to start? I was on a train. All my all my stories start with, I was on a train. Are you a hobo? <laughs> when, when you get on a train, do you throw your bag on and then jump on? <laughs> <laughs> Purely for the imagery, yes, I do. Um, but no, I was on a train. It was quite a late one. And it was full of cargo going to Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> it was full of kind of semi-drunk football fans. It was after the Chelsea game, I think, oh, yeah. uh, in the week. But I um, sat down. And the guy came and sat next to me. Was he a Chelsea fan? No, no, he wasn't. He supported he Exeter. Not so good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But we got talking. Started to make small talk. And he, yeah. I loved the fact he was in London going back to Bristol. But he'd been in London for a meeting because he was trying to start an official governing body for the UK to protect and promote the game Backgammon. Wow! I love Backgammon. It's brilliant. I used to, before I had a smartphone, I, I, one of my games on my old Nokia was Backgammon. I used to take my phone to the cleaners, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I was cleverer than that phone when it came to Backgammon, although I didn't have the ability to make you know, obviously the phone was clever in other ways. <laughs> it could link up with people miles away, which I couldn't do. So, how had he done in his meeting? I think. He, Why is he protecting the game of backgammon? Is it under threat? Well, I think it's um, again games. kind of think like with, yeah, computer games, smartphones, stuff like that. It's uh, a dying. Well, he he seemed to believe it was a dying art form. So there was a task force of six of them. It, I, I'm going to stop. We should play backgammon. Well, you need to teach me first. Okay, let's. Oh man, we should have a backgammon league. Yeah, down with the kids. Uh, <laughs> this is XFM. <laughs> um, now, um, I've had a big week as well. Um, I can't mention the company, but I think I've, I've lost the plot slightly in a dispute. I've, I, I, six months ago, I signed up with a TV and broadband provider. <laughs> Let's just say they've had a big week regarding Premier League football. Anyway, this company has their own sports channel. <laughs> and... I lost the plot to such a degree that I got the email of the CEO of this company and emailed them. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Well, they haven't got back to me. Oh. And I asked for compensation, but they said I couldn't have compensation because they hadn't managed to fix the problem, so the case wasn't closed. I said, that's the reason I want compensation. <laughs> These people, Neil. <laughs> when have you complained and what have you got is what we've asked the listeners. If you're listening and you run a company, I'll give you a clue. It might be your company if your your customer service is absolutely terrible. <laughs> I got put on hold for 10 minutes to go through to customer complaints. Got the same guy again <laughs> who pretended that he hadn't spoken to me before. It's like it was a gotcha Oscar. Do you want to breathe and we'll have a song? Yeah, okay. This is Kasabian. What is this? Josh Whittacombe. This is Josh Whittacombe on XFM. Producer Neil. Morning. Morning. Now, Producer Neil. Thank you. We've been we've been asking off the back of you meeting someone who's trying to set up the World Backgammon League or whatever it was. UK. UK, you know. World baby eventually, steps, maybe. Baby steps. Um, small. The most interesting person you've had small talk with. I mean, I'm pretty excited. This person called Tom Bravo. Is that a real surname? Yeah, why not? Oh, I just, it feels like that. He's probably changed his name to sound impressive. Or <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I mean, he is making big claims. I once had small talk with ex-England World Cup right-back Danny Mills whilst bodyboarding in St Ives in Cornwall. <laughs> now, the way I like to picture that is that they were bodyboarding together, catching the same wave. Do you, do you bodyboard? I don't, but I, I kind of obviously know what it is. Good. Like, I, I, I don't know what small talk you'd make bodyboarding. Bodyboarding's rubbish. It is kind of like poor man surfing, isn't it? Uh, surfing's rubbish as well, though, isn't it? <laughs> Have you ever been surfing? Yeah, I really hurt. I, I don't want to go on about my injuries, but I bent back my little finger. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, I, I'm not into extreme sports. Why, why gamble stuff like that? <laughs> Lindsay Taylor. I made small talk with a small town gangster. Put his glass eye in my hand whilst chatting about how my father-in-law had arrested him several times. 
Wow. That is intimidating. Because I'd fear that the putting of the glass eye in the hand is like a kind of marker that you're going to be killed. Watching you. Yeah. Also, Lindsay, if if you're worried about him, don't go around claiming he's a small town gangster. That's only going to inflame the situation. <laughs> What's my age again? Blink 182. And it's a genuine question because probably about 40. So why are you wearing those trousers? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Have a look in the full length mirror. That's what I'm going to say every time we play Blink 182. It's unacceptable, isn't it, Neil? I think it's about time somebody took that song down, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it is. Anyway, Matthew Crosby. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the Josh Riddicombe Show, where we're Great to be back. waging war on the fashion choices of Blink-182. Exactly. It really does feel like it's 2001 all over again. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know what uh, their album was called when I was at Sick Form? Enema of the State. Enema I don't want to go back state, into yeah. it, but come on. It's bad. That um, was... now, have you ever complained and what did you get? I'm a terrible complainer. Are you? Yeah, like, I, I'm the sort of person who will go home and complain to my wife about what's happened. That's who I was till this week. Really? So you've, well, you've I, complained, have you? I've emailed the CEO of uh, a TV company that I can't mention. Oh. <laughs> do you want to hear my email, or do you want to hear Crosby's... Let's hear Crosby's complaining story. I, I'm, absolutely, I'm absolutely useless. So, like, last the last time I had to complain, and this is... This is so bad. I feel I feel so gutted. I was eating uh, lunch in a restaurant that is themed around uh, a certain meal of the day. It's a club, and um, there was an entire enormous spider in the food. No, right? You didn't complain. I. This was when I was like, I'm going to have to complain. So I was there. Uh, with, I was there with Tom from Pappy's. I took it back and I said, Look, which feels like a joke. There's a spider in my tzatziki. Um, <laughs> Don't say it too loud if I want one. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a spider in my tattoo. What bad news for Greece? <laughs> <laughs> there's a spider in my tatsiki and they were like oh don't worry we'll bring you another one i was like no i'm not oh, no. i'm not i don't want another yeah. one tatsiki or spider um <laughs> sorry supposed to, that is supposed to be a two spider meal we're serving you there <laughs> so they said i don't and don't worry your meal's free and i said brilliant went to walk off and they went no your meal's free the, the guy you're eating with his meal isn't free and i went okay I should have. I don't know why yeah, I didn't stand up for myself. I should have said, "What are you talking about? Yeah. I will talk about this on the radio." <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I'm going to talk about this on the radio. I've got a platform. I'm going to use that no matter what. <laughs> I'm going to talk about. I am going to talk about this on the radio. Josh Latest single from George Ezra Cassio. Now, a big moment in the show, Matthew. Are you a fan of the Ting Tings? Well, I've got two ears and a heart. <laughs> <laughs> A few weeks ago, Neil, you, you, I'll, I'll explain. A few weeks ago, we talked at length, and the length was three hours. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the show. The yeah. show, yeah. About the Ting Tings and um, how they were playing a gig in Williamsburg. And we've had some correspondence. Had apparently. a letter in? No, no, we've had a letter in. Shall I just read it? Yeah. So, hi, Josh, Neil, and intern Charles. Contacting you from the lovely neighbourhood of Williamsburg, New York City. I was gutted Trendy. when some. <laughs> I was gutted when someone had contacted you regarding the Ting Tings concert being cancelled at Rough Trade, as I was eager to share the fact with you, being a local expert on, as you said, happening Williamsburg. I do often hear things about this very interesting record shop. It's only popped up in the last few months, and basically popped up being the operative word. <laughs> I imagine in Williamsburg, yeah. <laughs> um, basically, the only people I see there are European tourists, mainly purchasing very trendy Rough Trade tote bags. <laughs> Hello, you, you didn't go there and buy a Rough Trade tote no, bag. No, I went did there, you? but I didn't buy a Rough Trade tote bag. Why would you go to Rough Trade on your holidays? <laughs> Well, I went past it. Yeah, that's what I did as well. When I went to Williamsburg, I went past it, and then I went to the Brooklyn Brewery, because that's something you can't... Well, I suppose you can drink Brooklyn beer in London yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's true. Why travel, mate? I mean, you're the kind of person who'd go Still to Lineker's be... Bar when you go on holiday, wouldn't you? Can't, there's none in London. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Due to winter boredom, I thought of a great idea. Being a Williamsburg resident, I could report back to you directly from the front lines of the Ting Ting's Rough Trade yes, performance. Yes, please. Here we go. <laughs> it carries on. Uh, XFM could source a ticket for me at the concert at the reasonable oh, well. price of 25 US dollars. Perfect, I'll pay yeah. that. I've got 25 US dollars on me. Why are you carrying round? Because I was in New York two weeks ago. I know, two weeks ago. Change your jeans, mate. <laughs> no, 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 they're back on rotation. What, you, what, you put the money back into the... Put it. No, no, I found I found it this morning. Oh, well, congratulations. You should have put put that in the little envelope that goes to charity. That's where your spare holiday money goes. Yeah, the charity being those char two people that are trying to run the Ting Tings. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two people. Anyway. Surely you know what their names are. Yeah, Ting and Ting. 
Is that what they... they <laughs> yeah, the, that's the change. I don't know. <laughs> She's called... Uh, so this is from uh, Maggie Duffy. Oh, but then it says, if you choose to speak about this, can you not say my last name? Why does she say that? Is she on the run? Uh, don't want people to think I'm a massive Ting Ting's weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. No, so Maggie, um, we, we, are we, we, I, I'm, I th- I'm very excited about this. What is 25 uh, US dollars? What's the exchange 18 rate? 18 quid, maybe? 18 quid, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll chip in a few quid. Yeah, yeah happy, to, I, happy to do that. So when is the gig? In April? It was January, but then it's been moved to April now. So hopefully she's not I back mean, at this school. Is are the Ting Ting's just sitting in Williamsburg going... <laughs> Should we do this gig? <laughs> I mean, is there any chance we could... And it's not sold enough tickets. Let's push it, push it four months. We'll just... We'll can we just... Get, can it, can it get it pushed on X of M? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's very exciting. What, would, what do we want her to report back on? Their, their set list? Um, yeah, the, the set list. The, uh, kind of, the age, the average age of the audience, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. is very key. Yeah, that... If they leave with the tote bag? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, will it be a kind of Williamsburg audience? Because in America, are the Ting Tings a cool band? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Are they sort of like, just because they're obscure and from another country, are they kind of like a... Uh, maybe that's what I'm going to have to do comedy-wise. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maggie, um, what we're going to do, we're going to send you the... Tw- we're going to buy the ticket. We're not just going to send $25. Yeah, I've got Maggie's email address. Because what if she spent it on booze? <laughs> this might all be an elaborate plan to get $25 out of <laughs> For a tote bag. <laughs> For a tote bag. <laughs> She's got a serious tote bag problem. <laughs> um, we'll get in touch with Maggie if she can't do it. If we've got any other listeners in New York, we are willing to pay for you to go see the Ting Tings. Well, don't... You don't want to. You don't want everyone at the gig to be reporting for XFM. <laughs> everyone looking around, going, "There's loads of people here." Everyone's making notes. Wow, big gig. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will return to this next week. We don't... Josh Widdicombe podcast. XFM. Jose, take me to the church on XFM. As always, at this point on the Josh Widdicombe church, call my Josh. Have you played before, Matthew? Uh, almost certainly. Almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh my memory. I'm sure I have. Five things. Are they real or have I made them up? Yes. They are of a topic. Only twice have people got five out of five. Right. James A. Custer, B. E. Edmondson. We're starting to think it's just a test of how well you know me. Do you want I'll to take hear that your topic? Test. Do you yeah. want to hear your topic? What's my topic? Saturday night entertainment TV shows. Okay. Are these real or fake? Take that house party. Non-transmission pilot from 1995. Attempt to further the Knowles House Party brand with Take That hosting from their mocked-up house in Dangley End, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> including an unshown gotcha in which they tricked Noel Edmonds into thinking he was taking over the Queen's speech. The theme tune was an adapted version of the song Take That and Party to say Take That's House Party. Well, that does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only bit of it that does. Really? I think Noel's. Ha- I think Noel had a hand in the production of Noel's House Party and therefore owns the format. And I don't think you could have. I don't. I mean, there's no way. There's no way that Edmonds would have would let the brand be sullied. Yeah. So I've, I'm going to go false on that one. Correct. Oh, oh, yes. oh, I wish it was true though. I would. I mean, that's the problem with these. Yeah. I think these are great ideas. <laughs> that that would have worked. You do that now with with a with a hot pop band like uh, One D. <laughs> you got you got a hit on your hands. You got a hit on your hands. You got a hit on your hands. Ten pin trivia. ITV's response to the success of Big Break. Les Dennis and Jenny Powell host a show in which members of the public have to answer questions from more balls, bumpers, shorter lanes, etc. To bowl for prizes with celebrity bowling fans, such as Cold Feet's Helen Baxendale. Such as Helen Baxendale. She's a big bowling fan. So, so the contestants have to bowl and answer questions, is that right? Yeah, do you remember Big Break? So I, I love Big Break. Yeah. yeah, yeah, John Virgo's trick shot. So what you, can you do for bowling? You can't do a trick <laughs> shot in bowling. <laughs> no, but there was no Virgo. It was Powell and Dennis. <laughs> I've sat next to Powell oh, on a you? train, and the first person I texted was you. Because <laughs> I thought, who is going to be excited by this information? Was she still... Still got it. I, c- I, I couldn't. I couldn't talk to her. She was actually. I mean, she basically wanted to make small talk. This fits very neatly into your <laughs> oh, wow. into your topic. Yeah. She brought her own food. And, Did she? Yeah. And I, was I like, bet it was like macrobiotic. Or and something. I'd. I'd obviously it was weekend. Weekend uh, upgrade. I said to her, "You don't need to bring your own food. They're going to bring food." She was gutted. <laughs> <laughs> you think she? You think Jenny well, Powell travels first all the she time? Probably made seven or eight grand an episode of Ten Pin Trivia. She it made, was the 90s, yeah, so there when was they were big throwing money, yeah, money around. Throwing Paul money Ross around, was probably yeah. involved in yeah. the production of that. I'm going to say that is false. Correct. Yes, <laughs> of course it's false. Scavengers. Scavengers. The right. commander of the shuttlecraft Vulture, John Leslie, leads two teams of scavengers to the stricken cargo ship Cyclops in an attempt to retrieve salvage. Perhaps the most famous piece of dialogue in the whole show was when John said, 
ever heard my dog impression before shooting an alien, then curtly responding, woof, woof. You see, it, it sounds so believable till the end. You always throw in the, a little detail at the end that makes it seem like it's absolute nonsense. I am going to say... I'm going to say it's true. Correct. Yes. Oh, my word. Three out of three. Three out of three. Okay, fourth one. Animal antics. <laughs> is that... Is... <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor plays the host to a news programme. <laughs> that instead of news show... Instead of news shows internet animal clips, Taylor is accompanied by his co-host, Sparky, a grown man dressed as a dog. <laughs> Now, it I, sounds unrealistic. It sounds unrealistic. And to the three million, then two million, then one million, then zero million people watching it week to week. Vested interest? I have slight vested interest in that. Uh, yes, you know that I am Sparky the dog. <laughs> I'm still waiting for series two to roll around. <laughs> Me too, because I enjoyed it. It was really good. It was True or false? That is true. That yeah, is definitely four out of four. That's definitely true. I mean... Um, now, you're four out of four. Can you join the Hall oh, of Fame with Edmondson this, and The pressure A-Gaston. is really getting to me. An audience with Stomp. <laughs> Ooh. One-off ITV show pace in which Stomp dance and answer questions from a celebrity audience that includes... They dance the questions. Dance, yeah. <laughs> Bill Tommy, a.k.a. Jack Duckworth, Lulu, and bizarrely, David Bowie. Again, there's that thing at the... I am going to say... I'm, I'm going to say that is false. Five out of five! Oh, yes! He's joined the Hall of Fame! Oh, I am so delighted. Yes, I what bet. What a team, though. BT, <laughs> Acaster, that's a good team to yeah, be part of. it's a good team the to be part of. The Holy Trinity. If we do, whenever we do the final ever Call My Josh, we should get the, all the champions in. <laughs> do a tournament of champions. Tournament of champion of champions, Call I My will Josh. be back. It'll be me, it'll be Acaster, David Bowie will show up. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe, XFM. This is XFM, Josh Widdicombe Show. Matthew Crosby's still here. Do you want a very quick um, text from the audience about about interesting people they made small talk with? Here we go. I made small talk with Mick Taylor from the Rolling Stones. We chatted for ages about eggs. <laughs> That's great. I wonder how they got onto it and what his views were. He was travelling first class. He'd brought his own eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. He was. Gutted. I don't know if I'd recognise Mick Taylor unless he was in context. No, I've I've seen uh, I've seen Ronnie Wood um, walking through the streets of Soho, but I probably recognised Wyman if I saw him. Oh, I'd recognise Wyman. Mick Taylor for me was in the Rolling Stones during their best albums. There what, which, which albums was it? Was he Let It Bleed? Thing? Was he on Exile Main Street as well? Let It Bleed is my favourite Rolling Stones album. I think for me that draws a line under this conversation. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. That was Elbow, a day like this on XFM. This is the Josh Wickham Show. Producer Neil. Good morning. And Matthew Crosby. Hello. Are still here. Now, we have a caller, Neil. A very rare thing, but we're discussing complaining and what you've got out of it. And we feel possibly this is a... Well, let, 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 hello, Anonymous. Morning. Tell me through your story, Anonymous. Basically, uh, last year I moved into a flat that is above a uh, shop... Yeah. which will also remain anonymous. Um, <laughs> and there, is, uh, there is a shop adjacent to the... A car park adjacent to the shop, which is sort of, it's a private car park which could only be used by the customers of the shop. But unfortunately, in the evening, it's, it's totally unmanned and all the people that use the restaurant and the bar and the shops across the road and stuff like that, they just park there. And when they sort of come out in the evenings, they're... They're loitering, sometimes they're playing their car stereos. It's Friday, Friday and Saturday nights where, you know, one, two, three o'clock in the morning, we kept up by these, these maniacs outside in the car park. Yeah. So, um, so what have you done? So I, I tried getting in touch with the people that manage the car park. A reasonable know, and, action. Exactly. <laughs> but they were totally disinterested. So I went down and I spoke to the shop and I asked them if it would be okay if I... If I looked after the car park. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you've become you've you've taken on a kind of freelance parking attendant role. Yeah, I mean, if you want to call me the attendant, I'm I'm happy with that nickname. <laughs> okay. So what I've done is I I went to B and Q and I bought a couple of very sturdy looking padlocks <laughs> and a, a giant chain. <laughs> So do you lock it up all day? You lock it up the whole time. Last weekend was my my first attempt at this uh, this new technique. So. What I did was I, I went down at about ten to six. Uh, the shop shuts at six, and I explained to the uh, the manager in there what I was going to do, and he 
he looked at me and kind of mused but said, yeah, yeah, fine, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I went across to all the restaurants and the, <laughs> I told them I was going to look with half up. Very politely, I said, you know, in about 10 minutes' time, well, I didn't say I, I, I was in any, 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 any official capacity. <laughs> did you imply you were there in an official I did imply that I was, yes. Did you, did you bring I, uh, either clipboard or high-vis jacket? Uh, no, but I, I did dress in uh, a sort of all-black outfit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was carrying a torch. Oh my God. Me, uh, <laughs> did he, That's he brilliant. He picked up a torch. Because <laughs> at this point, there's about five cars in there, and none of them were shoppers in the yeah. shop. Nobody came out to get their car. Everybody denied that they were parked there. The shop closed. I chained up the car park, and within about a minute of me putting the chain, a man came running out from the restaurant, because obviously he'd seen that. I, I meant what I was... Yeah. I chastised him and said, you know, you're not allowed to park here. Read the signs. Sort you hadn't made the signs, had you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hadn't made the signs, but what I had done is I, I printed out some information to put on the windshield of the cars, the remaining cars that were in the car park. What did the information say? Uh, well, actually, I might have one here. <laughs> You're not in the car park at the moment, are you? You're not calling from the car park. You haven't built yourself a little booth. I have, um... <laughs> so what does the what do the sheets say? Briefly, it just explained that this the car park was for the shop customers only. Um, <laughs> and well, how does it end? Basically, I said because this, this was to be put on the cards that I was going to lock in the car park, so I left a number on there. Which your phone number? <laughs> what I'd done earlier in that day to prepare for this, I'd gone across the road and I'd bought a, a pay as you go SIM card with a new a new number. <laughs> you bought a burner like a drug dealer, <laughs> <laughs> like the wire. Yes, I, I didn't want people having my own number. No, of course not. So you've got um, a pay-as-you-go sim that they can call you on to get their cars un- unpounded? Ex- ex- exactly, yeah. How much are you down? Most of it I already had. So the, the, the padlock was, was about £21. Yeah, okay. um, about 21 The, the sim card was only 99p, and I, had a, and I had an old Nokia lying around. Yeah. So how's it ended? <laughs> well, it, on Friday night, um, I got a phone call about 1 o'clock in the morning from one of the people that are still in the car park. And I, <laughs> so I, I put on my official suit garb, headed down with my torch, <laughs> and... Uh, it turns out that, that one of the people in the car trying to leave was the same guy that had run out from the restaurant earlier. Oh. His, his friend this time. I, you know, I read them right. Act. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. This is amazing. That is incredible. So I'm, I'm confident I haven't actually broken any laws. <laughs> Somebody, all your listeners wants to call in and tell me differently. I'd be very much appreciated. I understand why you wish to remain anonymous. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anonymous. Yeah, no problem. Josh Whittacombe.